Well, we find ourselves back in the dog cave, my personal little office, which my grandchildren lurk about planning to crash and wreck and destroy as soon as they can get here. They love practicing Piaget's theories. What we're going to do now is we're going to move through the six periods of the sensory motor stage as developed by Piaget. So bear with me. We're going to hit these videos and we're going to have a lot of, a lot of fun. Of course, the sensory motor stage, period one, we have birth to one month. Now, I want you to watch this little varmint right there. That's my youngest granddaughter, Reagan. And, of course, she is older than one month old. But, oh, how well Papa remembers. Now, these stages, uh, or the sensory motor stage, is recognized by certain uh, functions which a person is able to do. And the periods, of course, are divided into those as well. The first period of the sensory motor stage is one month uh, of a birth to one month old. And you'll see here these two little infants. This is my daughter a number of years ago, and that's my beloved granddaughter, Tori, when she was a, even a little rat. Now she's a bigger rat. The first thing we notice in an identifying characteristic of the first period is that of reflex activity. Now, if you'll imagine with me just a minute one of these little infants, Think about how they operate. If you put something in their mouth, they suck on it. It may be a bottle. It could be a could be a wash rag. You know, whatever it is, maybe a finger. They'll suck on it. If you touch their hand, then then they will have a reflex in that hand that they will grasp it. That's reflex activity. Now, that's just their general step. Now, an object concept. They have no differentiation of self from other objects. Now, what I want you to recognize by that, and you'll grasp that as we go further in these periods, they do not see a difference between themselves and the environment in which they're in. It's all the same thing. And they perceive space and causality in an egocentric model. Egocentric means that it is about them. Now, that's normal in, in little infants, and you'll see a lot of egocentric behavior in children even as they grow older. Uh, the other day I was watching football, and my grandson got in the way, and I said, move, Gabriel, you're standing in my way. I can't see, and he looked at me like, are you a fool? I can see well. I see the game. He was very, very egocentric. Now, these, these little children also on the defective domain or into instinctual drives and reflex actions. In other words, they want to eat when they're hungry. They, uh, they cry when they hurt. Uh, if they're hungry, they may cry. If they don't like something, they may cry. They're, they're just based upon instinct, moving forward to do the things that they, their body tells them they have to do. And it's all about reflex. Those are the characteristics from newborn to one month. Now, stop and think about this a second. You're probably saying, well, what happens when a child becomes two months? Do all kids stay in this to one month? Now, remember what I told you about Piaget. What you're describing is a very American way of thinking about hard stages and the boundaries are clear cut. Piaget didn't view it that way. He just noted that from birth to one month, that a child operates on reflex, they're egocentric, and it's all about instinctual drives and reflex actions. Then they begin to proceed beyond that. So let's move into the next period and discuss it. And I also want you to watch the video that follows this one. This little fellow's reflexes are going wild. I think you're going to enjoy this. What do you think Piaget would say about that? 